What up, y'all? This is Cam, your host of Get a Load of This Trucking. Uh, today, I am super pumped up. We've got a great guy on the podcast. Uh, before we get to him, though, I want to thank my special co-host, Ryan Young uh, from Valley Hello. Trucking Insurance. What up, Ryan? What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining in. Yeah, I'm excited. And today, we have Anthony Petit. He is the CEO and founder of Truck Park. Anthony, how are you? Doing well. How are you guys? Good, man. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate that. I'm very excited to be here and talk more about truck parking. Yeah. What uh, part of the country are you coming from? Well, right now I'm in Bentonville, Arkansas. Our headquarters are in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Uh, But I moved out here just about a year and a half ago just so I could be closer to more freight. Uh, Obviously, J.B. Hunt's here. We have Walmart, right? It's Walmart country, as well as Tyson Chicken. So there's just a lot of freight going on here they almost call it freight alley capital yeah in the United States. exactly and it's funny you look through the united states and there's definitely alleys and lanes where you see just a For huge sure. dense population of trucking companies and people located there which uh, uh interesting enough that's where our clients are <laughs> they kind of follow that whole corridor there so and i saw you had a bunch of uh pin drops in uh canada as well so it looks like you guys are all over the place which we'll dive into that here in a bit Um, One of the cool things we like to do, obviously being centric around trucking, if you had a CB handle, Anthony, what would your handle name be? Wow, that's a a good question. Um, I always thought my CB handle would be like Blue Knight, you know, like something kind of crazy like that. Um, The reason why I say that, and that like a knight, you would think with body armor and a castle, but like knight as in, you know, evening, just because you know we deal with overnight parking and yeah. it really has to do with um, you know parking trucks overnight at at night. Love it. Uh, blue would be, I guess, derived from just the fact that we love blue here at Truck Park. I mean, <laughs> obviously we like green because that's our logo, but a lot of our uh, our C level execs are uh, fans of the color blue. So I would say Blue Knight and just kind of keep it as that. No, it's good. Our get a load of this uh, logo is blue. And then Valley Trucking Insurance is basically blue and black and gray themed for our color scheme. So that's awesome. My mind goes right to like Dark Knight, <laughs> which Dark I guess Knight. Okay. that, but more Batman theme because I thought that movie was awesome when it came out. <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie as well. But yeah. Dark Knight would be kind of scary for us, right? Yeah. Like, it, you know, it, it could be. Know. Know. <laughs> we'll park your truck where you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, which is not the purpose of what you guys created. Exactly. So, right. Now, I would love for you to kind of give us a you know, 20,000 foot view of what the company is, what it does in a nutshell, and we'll deep dive that in a bit. And then from there, I'd love to go to your past and you know, explain what brought you to this point, what brought you to solving, finding this um, problem that truckers have, which it's a big problem, and then coming up with the ideas and the tech and everything that you guys did to solve this. So let's let's start with a quick 30,000 foot view and then run through your history of what led you to where you're at. Well, yeah, it, it's, Truck Park is essentially a marketplace. So when you think about it, we have an application, we have a SaaS platform for fleets, and then we have a backend system for our operators. So in the marketplace, you have two sides, right? Just like everything else, you have your supply and then you have your demand. On the supply side is all the independently owned and operated facilities that we have within our platform, which is now just over a thousand locations across North America. Um, On our demand side, we have our independents and our owner operators who utilize our application. We have our fleets who utilize the SaaS platform. And then now we're trying to get into, and already pretty much have been getting into the intermodal and drainage space. So a lot of companies have reached out to us. We all know the current climate of the supply chain market. It's uh, the visibility is tough. The uh, there's market limitations in terms of finding capacity. So drainage and intermodal companies have reached out to us, especially the largest retails. Uh, Costco has reached out. Macy's reached out. Targets has reached out. And to say, hey, we have containers. Can we put either the containers on chassis or could we leave these containers in your yard and possibly stack them? So, you know, that really encompasses everything Truck Park does. But going down or back to our core principles, we're always focused on creating the best experiences we can for the driver. So no matter what we do, whether it's drayage intermodal, whether it's fleets, independent owner-operator, 
who are always focused on creating the best experience for every driver that sits in that truck and operates it. And so do you that's do a that problem. with uh, technology or how do you deliver in today's world for the experience piece? And I love that. That's kind of how you separate yourself in a marketplace, right? And especially in today's world where um, customer experience can get lost. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So the technology that we use, it's um, like I said, an application. We're actually the only app in the truck parking space, interestingly enough. Our competitors have, you know, SaaS platforms or web right. platforms, uh, use the website and, and hire a third party service to make the reservations. But we decided to be different, of course. We've always been different since the start. So we, um, you know, we built up an app. We wanted the independent owner operators to have an app to find parking. Obviously, there's about 100 apps out there for truck parking, or excuse me, not truck parking, but trucking in general. So right. uh, whether it's detention or this or that. But what we've also done uniquely is we've integrated with companies like an Echo Logistics or a DAT so that we can pro promote the visibility of our locations in other platforms so the drivers don't have to have 9, 10, or 12 different applications on their phone. Cool. So I think that's what really um, separates us from the rest of our competition, but also goes against some of those industry barriers. Yeah, it's smart. And a lot of people with limited space on their phones, myself being guilty, you know, it fills up with um, random ass apps or video or, or whatever. And it's like, man, I have no space. You know, is it worth it to put an app on? And my instant thought looking at it, it's kind of cliche, but it's like, oh, the Uber of parking for trucking, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm sure you yes. guys have probably thrown that around would be my guess. But that, that was where my mind went when uh, when you had reached out and we connected and I was like, oh, this guy is cool. And the, the platform you have serves a, a great need. I mean, I think it's an awesome solution. And, and I didn't, you know, you brought up an interesting point there with the, with the ports. Cause yeah, people are all focused on the ships out in the port waiting to offload. Um, some of the issues and barriers we're running into with, um, you know, the ability to fulfill the amount of need that is there with the truck drivers, minimum support with labor, not ability to run full lanes. And we haven't really since, COVID started, right? I mean, it's been a very yeah. different look in the port system there um, that I wouldn't even have guessed that. that. That's a very interesting thing that you brought up there. So, and, and they're asking you kind of for storage on one side and then, hey, you know, let's drive people closer to there to park so we got the ability to run those containers out. Um, didn't even think of that. That's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good opportunity, you know, just to, to keep it short. When you think about all the, the ship vessels that are coming from overseas, they're essentially parked in the ocean right now. Yeah. They're waiting to get on the ports. The docks are completely full. There's nowhere for them to, you know, essentially park up and, and unload. And then you have the other side of the industry where, you know, you have these crazy third-party laws in California where half the drivers don't even want to go across the border. They just want to leave the freight in Nevada. It's like, you can come, go ahead and pick it up. And then when you have that issue, you have... The, you know, these big box retailers who finally get their containers, get their freight off the vessels. But then because there's a shortage in drivers and drayage uh, workers, then it's like, where do I store these trucks yeah. until we can finally find a carry to come pick them up? Yeah, that, yeah, that's cool. So you guys are saving. It's funny. We brought this up with one of our prior guests. Uh, truckers are saving Christmas, right? Everyone's worried and people are shopping for Christmas presents like now. And it's months right now, and months right. away because they're so fearful of all this impact of not the, having the ability to get things shipped and delivered. Um so there you go. You're saving Christmas, the blue night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Christmas came early. <laughs> That's badass, man. Well, tell us about your history. Um, it has to be an interesting one to lead you to here and to here. I mean, you guys are solving I mean, the problem solving. and have a passion for this. So tell us about that. So we started this business about five or six years ago with my late uncle. He was a Teamster driver his entire life. He also, um, when he drove trucks, he was more short haul, but he had parking problems. And this was in the 90s, right? So, or even late 80s, rather. And um, as he uh, continued to, to drive, he also eventually retired. And then he um, became kind of a, a big uh, name in the, the real estate market in Chicago. He owned a parking facility in Chicago, um, Southside. And that was essentially our flagship location, how we all got started. He had asked me to build, on him, build him a website. Uh, I have 
six years in digital marketing before I even got into truck park. So okay. I was building out websites. I was working in the financial sector doing, you know, uh, search engine optimization and making sure that, you know, people could find the company when they did a simple Google search. Cool. Um, so I did the same thing for him. Essentially, you know, back then it was almost impossible for drivers to find these locations. I mean, locations like my uncle had was a um, facility that was essentially way back behind a bridge. Like you couldn't even find, if you were even passing by, you'd have to venture into that long driveway to even find where his location was parked. So he had zero visibility into the outside world and I built up a website to provide that visibility. That's where it all started. I mean, I, you know, my uncle uh, had about 800 spots and we filled up 600 of 800. So it's 80% of his spaces within about eight to eight months, maybe nine months. Um, so right, that was another key indicator for me that I knew that there was a market out there. I could not just focus on helping my uncle, but I could perhaps start calling upon other operators in Chicago. And that's what we did. And that's what I did, essentially. I just got on the phone and I, I started talking to operators who said, yeah, we're, at, we're operating at a 55% occupancy right now. We'd love to be at 100, obviously. Right. You know, the more occupancy we generate, the more money and the revenue cash flows that we bring in our company. So I knew I was providing a service to the operator. That was my turn to turn around to the other side of the market and bring the business to them. So that's where I created Truck Park. Um, that's where it all started. And then uh, actually met my co-founder, who's now our chief operating officer, through a mutual friend to later find out that his brother was and is still a truck driver. So cool. um, a lot of cool things happen, and that's how we started. Yeah, isn't it funny right, how so everyone has a family that are trucking and a past that intertwines somehow that leads you to this road. So awesome. That's a badass yeah. story, man. What up, Ryan? Uh, I was going to say, so it started with the one lot. In Chicago, it sounds like south side of Chicago. Is that the first lot? And then you expanded. How, how did the expansion go for you? You know, I guess what location? So the listeners kind of know a little bit more about it. Because we looked at the map and it looks like you are, you know, a very heavy, heavily presence. And of course, the, you know, northeast, southeast, midwest, south, and then the lower west coast especially. But you want to kind of... Ex- explain how the expansion went and you know any hurdles you may have faced and also just location availability for truck drivers yeah of course great question so you know we of course started off with one just about five and a half years ago and started expanding out through chicago um, retained about five or six different locations within the span of about a year and then you know we Knew from right there that even five or six, you couldn't really do it as a manual process where you send drivers to the the marketing and the operations and all that. So we needed to get an application uh, platform on board. So we took our small little network to a a company in Chicago that uh, built up our application and, you know, really created a a digital experience for our customers. Um, But how we really started building up supply was... Um, we looked at, you know, different parts of the country and how we can help kind of run the same model as I did for Mountville or the, some of the other companies in Chicago. And right. uh, they were really receptive to it. They said, you know what, we're really interested in a model where you can take our occupancy threshold and bring it to, you know, 20, 30% up, you know, markup. And when we started doing that, they started talking just like anything else in this business and or this industry rather. And, you know, it's, it's, it's word of mouth. And so they would tell their friends and their friends would tell their friends and eventually it was adding on more locations. I would say some of the, some of the biggest issues that we did face early on, just like any other company or startup that's, you know, trying to build up a business, it's just the, first of all, could we accommodate to have so much capacity on our platform at once? Like it was our (laughs) application going to be uh, strong enough to accommodate all this. And we had, we did run in those financial hurdles, not even financial, but technical hurdles rather, um, just because you have maybe like a, like we built the application, but it was like in beta stage and the beta stage can only hold 50 locations. So when we added on 60 locations, all of a sudden the app went down. So that was one of our hurdles and the app was down for about two or three days, which probably cost us a lot of business, but that's a learning experience for everybody. Um, I would say another fi- financial hurdle is when we ran into operators who say, well, 
we're at 100 percent occupancy we really don't need you and then they would push us away and we would lose business essentially because they didn't want to do business with us so there was some of those um those walls that we had to climb right and i think how we climbed a lot of those walls where we went back to those same operators a couple of months later and said hey we figured out something you might be at 100 percent occupancy during a certain seasonality push meaning like November through January just because of Christmas and, and, and Thanksgiving and all the, the freight that's being moved. But how are your occupancy rates doing in, in March and April? Like, what are you doing in, the, in Q2? And they would come back and say, you know what, you're right. We're doing it about 80%. And that's when we were able to get the business. So we were able to accomplish a lot of those hurdles, walk over, climb those, those, those small foothills and get to the other side. And that's really what um, helped us become successful and um, the last thing I would say to digress here is the fact that we started going after all these independently owned and operated facilities, but what if we were creative to the point where we started looking at off airport parking, right? Like, especially during the pandemic where there wasn't really a market for people to travel because the airlines were shut down or right. you can only travel if you had a certain, you know, uh, government tag, so to speak. So we were um, doing a lot of business out of off-air parking, which helped increase a lot of our inventory and our vast network. Uh, we even you know, partnered up with, uh, funny enough, the NBA, where we're trying to figure out other ways to you know, accommodate parking within stadiums. So we're, uh, we're always looking for creative opportunities. If you're a carrier terminal that's listening to the show right now, or you're a, a farmer even perhaps, you know, we would love to monetize some of your underutilized property. So that's, that's exactly how we got to the a thousand locations that we do have today. Yeah, that's fantastic. And maybe you and I should talk a little later. I might have a, a farmer who's trying to utilize an extra property for you. So I'll let you know yeah. on the back end. Um, you know, you were saying that obviously you expanded with certain companies just like by kind of exposing their quarter to, you know, I guess losses for a lack of better phrase at the time. But now did that work into where you're only working with them seasonally or those guys are all year round as well and now you just kind of get a portion and you're just helping them stay at 100% all year? Is that? Yeah, that is, that is exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that gave you just a huge opportunity to kind of break into the market 100% just by exposing just a little bit. That's that's actually incredible. And so with, you know, obviously you guys have the app now, um, are you, what's your kind of subscriber status? Is this people just have, have the app and everything, you know, regulates with their ELD or other devices or how can they, you know, find your parking lots with ease, right? How are you attracting new, new clients and truckers and how are they able to find your locations and where are the best places for them to find them? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, here's the thing. So we, we started just like everybody else, you know, you have to go out and get the business. But now that the, the, the script has flipped over the last couple of years because we've gotten so busy and, and companies trust us on the supply side and uh, co companies or customers trust us on the demand side to safely park their, their trailers or their, their containers or their, you know, uh, just the cab of the truck, so to speak. You know, we have received a lot of organic traffic and that organic traffic is just people reaching out to us, going to our website, www.truckpark.com, looking at our products and clicking on our links and then getting to the product and downloading them. And then of course, utilizing the product. Um, I would say for people that don't know about us, haven't heard about Truck Park, the easiest way to do that again is to go to that website and to look at our products, to um, kind of see even a visual. There's demos that my team can go ahead and share before we even you know, start parking with us. So there's just a lot of options that we present on a marketing standpoint and how to get the name, the product, and the brand out there. How do you divide out the um, pricing? Is it, is it a per truck subscription? Is it a per company subscription based on number of trucks? Um, what does it look like on the revenue side to buy into this? Yeah. So one of the things we did in the very beginning was you know, we're not going to build this application. We're not going to build truck park. 
unless we're going to talk to drivers. So we talked to about 500 to 1,000 drivers before we even started Truck Park, before we even really hit the market and ran. Because the biggest thing here is we wanted to build something that the truckers would actually use and not look at it like, mm, if they charge me $5 for the app, then I got to go in there and pay for truck parking the app. What's the point of that? Like, I want visibility for free, but then I also, of course, want to pay for parking. So on the revenue standpoint, you know, we, we collect our fees from the operator, from the parking owner. Oh, we take cool. a, a percentage of that spot. And by um, taking that percentage of the spot is because we're obviously being their lead generator, so to speak. We're giving them visibility for free, but then we're also saying, we're going to fill your spots. We're going to fill your spaces. Awesome. And so and, that's and they're where the booking, they're booking oh. through the app. So you're tracking everything based on that. And, and are they paying through the app when they book the spot and they can pay they start a trip they know they'll be here they see oh there's a spot book that spot i get there it's available good to go is that how that works yeah it's all transactional so the cool. the independent uh, truck driver or the owner operator so to speak goes into the application and then they'll be able to bulk just like if you book through a parking app you're able to bulk your cool. your spot and it's guaranteed when you arrive the same concept works with the fleet platform however it's more like a bank account where they're actually up able to upload an account balance and then bulk reservations on behalf of the drivers awesome yeah and i'd love to explore that option too for our clients i think it's a i think it's a tremendous app and i think the value there is amazing i mean it uh, the whole world's moving um to a digital platform anyway people want real-time response they want also that security of knowing i'm starting this i'm going here i need to know i have a parking spot i don't need to get there and try to find a Walmart, which, you know, they're cutting down on the ability to park. There's just less and less opportunity and places for people to park is, is kind of what I've been hearing from a lot of our clients. So um, that's something that we'll explore, Anthony, uh, offline to basically do push, push notifications and like onboarding, you know, give that opportunity for, for you guys to get exposed to a lot of truckers. So I think that that would be a cool, cool thing. What has been one of the um, highlights of this endeavor and journey to you. And then let's also take it on the flip side, because as any uh, entrepreneur or business owner, and, and a lot of people listening own their own trucking company, what's one of the major pain points or maybe big mistakes or just something that was super impactful that you took and you learned from? Yeah, of course. Um, let me start off with the, the pain point because you know, that's how you, you essentially build a business yep. for anybody who is an entrepreneur who wants to get into the business. There's going to be a lot of uphill battles that you're going to have to face. There's a lot of failures within the business. It's not necessarily like the business, you know, goes bankrupt and then you fail. I mean, that happens to companies all the time, but there's also failures within the business that you have to go through. And I think one of the biggest um, obstacles or leaps that we had a, um, essentially hurdle over was the fact that it's like, great, we have all these locations, but we don't have enough demand or great. We have all this demand. <laughs> we don't have enough locations right. or the demand goes, well, you know, we, we want to park here, but you don't have a presence there. And it's like, okay, well, I can't help you because you want to park by tomorrow and that could be an issue. So I think there's a lot of hurdles that we faced, but the way to, to really go ahead and, and look at the situation at hand is to say, okay, well, we got to do the chicken and the egg model, right? We need one before the other. So the biggest thing that we found out is that just get all the supply that you possibly can. Just continue building up supply, continue growing anywhere where that driver is going to park because the drivers will come. They need parking. It's essential. Um, but the space is, is for you to provide, for us to provide in our market. So that's where we're like, okay, in the very beginning, I think uh, we had a call with, and I'm not afraid to share, it was with U.S. Express, and they loved our model, they loved our concept, and they said, well, we have a lot of drivers that need secure parking. Like, we park with Pilot Flying J, and we park with Loves and yep. TA Petro, but, like, we really need to find secure parking for some of our loads. And, um, like, how many locations do you have? And, you know, maybe it was just a, the early adopter thing for us. It was, like, kind of a lack of research, maybe, as well where we were like, well, we could accommodate your 10,000 trucks. Well, how many spaces do you guys have? How many locations do you have? We're like, well, 55. Right. <laughs> so I think where it's like, those were, that was probably one of our biggest pain points where they're like, okay, we have 10,000 trucks, 55 locations is not going to cut it. Yeah. So you're going to have to go out and build your supply. And that's what we did. So that's the pain point. I have to say the 
really biggest enlightenment to this business um, is just kind of watching things happen and unfold. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, there was really no other parking competitor out there, and trucks just had the hardest and most difficult time finding a safe place to park. And it goes back to, you know, even the Jason Riverberg case in, in, in 2011 where he couldn't find a parking and the shipper was like, no way, you can't park here, and he parked outside, and then unfortunately, you know, he was robbed and killed at gunpoint. Yeah. Um, it's just a horrible situation. And the fact that we're able to help drivers not only find safe and secure parking for their assets, but we're able to find secure locations where they could be safe overnight and avoid situations like that, yeah. that is the biggest enlightenment for us. Yeah. Because we're helping thousands, if not hundreds of thousands to millions of drivers do this every single day. That is something that truly goes back to creating that experience for the driver. It's also, not only creating the experience for the driver, but helping the driver in the capacity as well. Well, that had to be a major impact point and enlightenment to you for sure is knowing, wow, we're doing more than just providing a spot to park, right? It, yeah, you are, but you're delivering an experience, you're delivering peace of mind, which is priceless, yes. right? Um, you're helping keep truck drivers safe. And more importantly too, you know, what as any business owner wants to protect is their bottom line, right? And the dollar and the income that they're earning, which is why they're doing it. You know, a claim for, to speak insurance terms, uh, for cargo, theft of cargo, damage cargo, damage to truck, you know, any of those things take time, money and energy and focus away from what they're doing. And that's running a trucking company or driving their truck from point A to point B safely. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. That ought to be a, a huge aha light bulb moment. And that, that's kind of where my, my, my mind went when you were telling that story. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't even think of those things, you know. So that, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, I think the demand is definitely there, I, you know, and I think the exposure with your background in marketing, I'm guessing um, it's easy for you to kind of just start – laying out Google ads, display ads, and that kind of stuff. Now, do you have the ability to allow companies to market through the platform? And then I guess to, to side off of that real quick too, do you have push notifications that go through in certain regions? So, hey, there's a major storm coming through, or hey, you know, there's something happening in this area where one of our parking's at. Can you push notify people that are intended to land in that parking? So we have push notifications. Um, to the extent of we're, we're constantly updating our customer base with new information. So if we add a parking facility, the operator, or excuse me, the drivers know about it. If we're um, adding on a new big contract with a big fleet, the operators know about it. Cool. Um, what you described is very cool because we have been looking into it. Like we're talking with uh, the, the platform out of Canada, WeatherTech. Uh, awesome. we're, we're trying to talk to the uh, sonar, right? Like some afraid we have sonar information. How can we provide some of that visibility on our platform so that we could essentially say, hey, you can go park at this location. We would advise you not to because there is a storm coming through, like a major storm. Um, so that would obviously go back to the key principles. One of the many key principles that we have at Truck Park that focus on driver safety. Yeah. If you were to say your core values or your promise or your truth as a business, right? What you guys believe in, what would you define those as? I would say number one is safety, for sure. I'd say uh, number two is the experience. I always go back to experience because it just, I mean, everybody that may or may not know the story of Walt Disney how he became so popular and built Disney World and, and all the characters was that he was providing the children an experience. Yeah. So that is what we're focused on. We want to provide drivers experience. Like if you don't get a good experience when you go out to the movies and like you're sitting in a you know really nasty seat and the popcorn tastes stale, you're not going to go probably go back to that theater. Right. So we want to create an experience where it's like every time you go there, it's the best thing you could possibly imagine. You're safe, you're secure. You meet other drivers that have like-minded interests. You know, we provide, um, you know, health care. Uh, that's part of uh, the truck park services. Like everything you need is one-stop sh shop service with truck park. So I think experience would be number two. And I said the last thing, three would be commitment because we're committed to providing safety and experience. So we're doing the three, the two, and the one to give that driver the best possible opportunity for them. Great answer. I love that. And that's, uh, 
That's true as it gets right there. And so I love that. And you know, you spoke on something too for the growing pains, which I'm sure you felt the financial impact, but not only it impacted your experience factor is when the app shuts down and, and there's a partner you mentioned that we're a partner with as well. Recently, they've been having tech issues where the system shuts down and you just see a ripple effect of people very pissed off of like, what's going on? The app's down, the website's down, you know, this is down. And that is a lasting effect too. It's a negative experience. You can overcome that. But like you mentioned, you go to the, the movies, you get a very poor experience. Um, you know, whatever the issue is, bad popcorn or, or what have you. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to go back to that theater again. Right. <laughs> so, um, but service is paramount and key because you get a bad experience at a restaurant. Even if you love, love, love that restaurant, it's it's hard to overcome that one poor experience. So um, I'm guessing you invested heavily in the future for servers and tech and the platform and the ability to handle the expansion and stuff, which uh, was was great insight for the company. So I had a, I was actually curious if we could focus a little bit more on security for just a second. So I imagine kind of starting this out as you were finding lots, and I, correct me if I'm wrong. I have no idea, but. Um, you, you when you're talking to lot owners and you you know you're trying to offer offer your service or partner with them, were you having security issues at all, or were you trying to maybe address those? Because I imagine not everybody parking lot owners have the same security, right? And so, kind of, can you maybe tell us like any issues you had with that, and anything you've done now that's maybe helped, or you know your partners have done now that have helped with that? Yeah, so I, I would start off with. Um... In the very beginning, we've always wanted to create a principle, right, of safety. But it was not having the education on what facilities actually look like and what type of security would be necessary to fully protect the asset. And so I think that was probably one of our pain points in the beginning to do we allow for the most secure location or do we even allow for the least secure location with just you know, gravel yard and maybe camera surveillance in the back corner. And obviously, just like anything in the beginning, it's like, well, we really just want more location. So do we just kind of give up our little, our key model or do we stick to our key model and have less locations? So it, it came down to a lot of factors. And we came back after we talked amongst each other and, of course, talked to drivers because, again, that's what we did before we even hit the market and went, hit the ground running. And it, it was all... No, we're going to be committed to offering secure parking. So if you have a location, you don't have a fenced in perimeter, you have one secure camera, you're lit, you're, it's not well lit, it's like impossible to see where you're parking, we don't do business with them. We only do business with absolutely secure locations. Doesn't mean that they have to have a vanguard walking around, no. It, it means that they have to have at least a fenced in perimeter, camera surveillance and every light facade or pole when I say life is out of pole, it also means it's a well-lit yard. Asphalt grinding, concrete, all those are fine, but we want to make sure that the yard is up to date. There's not tire shreddings left in slots. We want to make sure our driver has equally the best experiences we're going to have at parking, our parking operator's facility as well as using the truck park platform. All right, that's excellent. Yeah, so you guys have been thinking about it from the beginning, which <clears throat> I imagine that not every business does that where they – focus on profit first <clears throat> and then you know instead you built a foundation so i mean to me it sounds like it sounds really secure i'm, I'm sure you're not going to run into 10 dobermans maybe when you <laughs> park your truck but um, right. no that sounds excellent man and, and you know i think Keep it's a big <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. i think it's a big focus that people will be concerned about if they're just learning about your platform right is everything secure and you know are there places where there might be some compromises on that and it doesn't sound like that at all so that's really fantastic well i think what's cool about that too ryan think from a perspective of um, as insurance professionals right and we we only work with trucking transportation companies or surrounding the industry i can take that and put that into our cover letter and our our sales pitch to the insurance company to our preferred vendors and say look these guys use truck park Here's the minimum standards of truck park. Therefore, they're reducing their risk of loss. They're not going to have as many cargo thefts. They're not going to have as many vandalism claims. They're not going to have all these issues that you could potentially face just parking rogue out on the side of the freeway, highway, you know, wherever you find a spot, and you're not going to be subject and targeted for theft. And I think, you know, 
unfortunately, a lot of people and criminal organizations are shifting their focus. It's not, they're getting more complex, right? They're getting more sophisticated when it comes to cargo theft and when it comes to all these things where it used to be, you know, they just go rob, hold up the driver, empty the cigarettes out of the back of the truck. It's, it's, it's not like that anymore because now they know and they're able to identify and target high valued loads from where they come from to, you know, I, I mean, technology is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because the criminal enterprise has moved to hiring hackers, has moved to hiring people that can hijack information. And with that, bill of ladings and, and certain sensitive information that could potentially make you a target. So, um, so from a standpoint of insurance, it's going to reduce your risk, your exposure to loss, therefore driving insurance premiums down. Um, I guess is the easiest way to put that. So that, that's well, not to I, mention I that now, that. you know, my biggest thing is since we started this podcast, I don't know how many episodes are we in, Cam? Like seven, eight, nine, and something coming up on that. Yeah, something like that. So you know, obviously, all the all the people we've talked to are fantastic, and they, everybody has their own, you know, amazing incentives to offer. But this is huge for us, right? This is huge because I I was excited about talking to you. Yeah, today. we have drivers. Was, yeah. Drivers that I mean, I know guys that will literally park two miles from their house on the side of the street. I actually have a client who, about four months ago, his garaging address was not his home address. <laughs> we, I didn't know that, but he left his truck out on parked on the side of the road where a few other people apparently parked their trucks, and his truck was stolen. You know, he luckily he got it back, but it was like five days of. It was the first day of his first load when he started his company too. So it was. <laughs> It was a it was a pretty you know I'm sure scary experience for him and having access to a location like this was huge so yeah I mean I think that it's going to be tremendous value for our clients and anybody listening and yeah thanks because it's something that I hadn't actually heard of until you know the last few days so <laughs> it's great hey thanks. Anthony what's a way that like anyone listening or even you know as we come across other potential partners of your business like that that want to meet these minimum thresholds and stuff what's a way that we could help you out you know what's something that we can do is it just simple introductions to you um or if somebody listening is like oh i got some space and property or land i want to utilize what's the route they take you know to get in touch with you to become a, an affiliate partner i suppose yeah of course i think uh, the best thing um for us to obviously work together and is to kind of go after the market on both sides, right? Go after the the people listening that are saying, hey, I have land, I have a repair shop, I have a farm property, like you were talking about, Ryan. Like, whatever you have that you want to monetize, you can reach out to us um, just actually through info at truckpark.com. Um, again, that's info at truckpark.com. And um, the other side of it, on the demand side, you can use the same address info at truckpark.com but like if it's a, a carrier who wants to reach out and say hey look like I have 150 trucks I want to park at least 40 of them because 40 of them are my sleepers and they're always going across country looking for secure parking what does that look like if they email info at truckpark.com they're able to go ahead and just have um, that information go directly to our team where then we can go ahead and, and call them and, and give them a, a rundown of our operation how it works Perfect. And we'll make sure to utilize that common email when we're referring over our clients and stuff like that too. So what's uh, what's something exciting on the horizon, man? Tell us what's in the future over the next year in development, three, five years. Tech doesn't usually think that far ahead a lot of times, but tell us what we got coming up. Yeah, I mean, we're just continuing to add on more and more locations throughout North America. We're really excited about the growth that we've had right now. Like we're at a thousand locations. Our goal is to get to 35 hundred locations would be almost 70 percent of this entire market we would own um, in tr terms of truck parking so that's on our horizon we just want to continue adding more supply we want to continue adding of course on more truck drivers more fleets uh, more drage intermodal especially that we're kind of turning into that market right now uh, we'd love to add on more drop yards and more intermodal yards across the country to accommodate our uh, our customers have you guys now, started there... thinking about uh, electric parking and charging? Yeah, yeah. So I think one of the other things that we've done is uh, we've added on-demand fuel, right? So drivers able to stay at our locations and not have to go find a gas station nearby. 
even if they knew where it was, why would you take the risk at night to go find it right. when all the variables are in play? Right. Um, why don't you stay in the yard and essentially either uh, some of these on-demand fueling locations are self-serve, right? But they're within the facility where they don't have to leave. You just, you're there. That's cool. Or they're wet hose the truck where you don't even have to leave your spot and the truck comes to you and fills you up. Kind of like in the 50s where the, the you had the gas station attendants come out and fill you up, right? And you didn't have to get out of your car. So it's like, it, but it goes back to the experience, right? So that's something that we do offer right now. In the future, we are looking at several companies on the EV side. We actually partnered up with, uh, already with ChargePoint um, to kind of figure out a way in the future what trucks do go that. I mean, obviously right now you're talking about the larger fleets might be yeah. turning like Walmarts might be having a bunch of electrical vehicles, but your small mom and pop fleets absolutely won't in the next, at least in the next five to 10 years. But at least we'll be at the forefront of that. And we're excited to have partnered up with ChargePoint because we do believe that they're going to definitely reap what they sow and definitely get a lot of that business from us, especially when the market turns. That's awesome, man. If I don't see a Blue Knight logo coming out with a marketing campaign, I'm going to be so disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, Blue Knight has to do it for sure. Blue Knight protecting everything. <laughs> exactly, right. That's amazing. Hey, uh, out of curiosity too, so as you're trying to you know grow your market share, are there any areas and in- North America, I guess, as a whole, but in the U.S. specifically, maybe a little more that you're really trying to, you know, expand that, you know, might be helpful information for people who are interested in the plug. Yeah, I would uh, love for us to get more cross-border freight. So, like, cross-border parking, obviously, um, if you have a location, like, literally right on the border of Canada, like Detroit, um, just or Windsor, or even I don't know if there's uh, parking allowed in Windsor because it's like a big party place. But uh, <laughs> like we can literally just be right over the border, so to speak. We would love to have that business. I mean, that's going to be really big for us. Like we essentially um, we want to do partnerships with like Forger, right, and like Molo. And I know Molo's more internally, but Andrew Silver's brother is Matt Silver, who owns Forger, and. Um, you know, he does a lot of cross-border freight. I'd love to get that business. I'd love to provide secure locations in Mexico, secure locations in, in Canada, so secure locations even in Central America or in South America and, and all across the world. I think that would be really our biggest goal in the next decade is to look at other places across the world where we can be or utilize the same experience and get this to the drivers across those countries. You're an ambitious man. I love it. You're ambitious, but I mean, it's a it's a yeah. great it's a great plan, and yeah, right. you know, obviously, we wish you the best, and we think that you're probably going to make that happen. So well, the need the need's there, and it's definitely blue ocean, right? So usually, it's execution, yeah. speed to market, and blue ocean that succeeds, and you get a lion's share of it, and then you get a bunch of imitators. It'll happen. Airbnb has imitators, right? Uber has imitators. So now nah, you'll execute. I love it. Yeah, that's killer, man. Yeah, thanks for that. And then, so you and do you have current? Uh, lots on the Canadian side, maybe that are near the border, and you're just looking for them on the other side as well, or both sides of the border. We have locations in more like northern Canada, um, which we're blessed to get. But again, that's not obviously on the border. We would love to get those locations. Like we don't have a a great. We had a location in Detroit, but it was 100% occupied, and then it wasn't really meeting the standards of our security thresholds. Where again, like going back to uh, providing safety. Like we want to have the best of the best. So if we can find the best of the best in those key locations, I would say it's more specifically like anywhere in Ontario because they can cross border freight with Buffalo, New York. You can cross border freight with, uh, you know, Detroit, Michigan, and then all the way to like even Vancouver where you can cross border freight with uh, Seattle and some of those, you know, right. north, uh, west locations. Yeah, and has, has that ever been a challenge for you? I don't know if you knew this, but I'm actually currently in Vancouver, BC right now. And I know that property values here are nuts. So I'm imagining, you know, they're a little less when you get a little closer to the border. I'm about 40 minutes away right now. But have you have you guys seen those issues where there's just like maybe property values where there's just not as many parking lots because, you know, prop, you know maybe they want to build a skyscraper. I have no idea what... Have you, have you ran into any of those types of concerns? Um, well, you know, the one thing about being a marketplace is that we're not buying those locations. We're essentially right. providing visibility of locations. Uh, when it comes to property values, you know, we do have a division. We created a real estate division to help out 
you know, new operators build in, you know, all key different parts of the markets. But, you know, yeah, of course, there's going to be different property values uh, all across the country. Obviously, property values can probably skyrocket and cross-border locations because there's so much freight that goes across those specific, right. specific areas every single day. Uh, I couldn't tell you the numbers because it's so fragmented. It can be, you know, X in, uh, you know, Seattle and X in uh, New York. So it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to answer that question, but right. I would assume that it's, it's definitely an uphill battle for everybody to face to, to get uh, not only a, a secure yard in certain markets, but also having to face a lot of the uh, scrutiny that comes along with it from local municipalities like Michigan, or not Michigan, excuse me, Minnesota right now, if you've seen the news, like Minneapolis has banned truck parking. So we have a parking location outside of Minneapolis, which is so great because you can't park in Minneapolis. So there's like things like that where um, we can come into play and say, hey, we can help you find, you know, areas to, to build because we know the market. But when it comes down to obviously property values, that's a, a little bit different uh, use case. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, I appreciate it. I know it's kind of a little tough of a question and not necessarily always under the wing of your company scope, but I just thought it'd be probably an interesting hurdle to <laughs> to jump over. But yeah, in Minneapolis too, that's a, like logistically, that's a pretty compact city, right? So, and they have a decent transit system. So I guess as long as they have secure parking, they can get into the city if they need to pretty easy still, right? So, cool. Yep. Of course, I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I know that you probably got to get along with your day. Is there anything that you would like to add as far as, you know, maybe a promotion for your company, uh, you know, where anybody might be able to get a hold of you or learn more about Truck Park? We'll enter all this in the show notes, of course, but anything else you'd like to add? I mean, I would say uh, going back to the easiest place to get a hold of us as a team is www.truckpark.com or to go to info at truckpark.com. That's probably the easiest way. You could, there is a, in our contact us page, I believe we have a, a form where you can fill out and, and contact us if that's easier for you or for the people listening uh, on this call. Um, you can always contact me directly. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm always on LinkedIn. I'm always talking or answering somebody's um, you know, questions. And that's or where we actually find you. And some of posts. So you can, <laughs> yes, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. <clears throat> Excuse me, and send me a direct message. And I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to assist. Awesome. Thanks. Um, now, another question we'd like to ask our guests before they get out of here is, you know, if you could deliver a unique message to the world, or it doesn't necessarily have to be unique, I suppose, but a message coming straight from you that we could put on a billboard, uh, what would you want to deliver? Whether that's the truck, ri truck drivers or everybody, feel free to expand, but what would you put on that billboard? You're asking me, or is that for your? Uh, that is that is for you, my friend. <laughs> oh, that's for me. Okay, um, I'd say uh, uh, safe parking guaranteed would be on that billboard. So amazing, yeah. And I mean, that's you know speaking to your product and speaking to everything you've mentioned, and we're really happy to have the opportunity to speak with you and then have the opportunity to you know give this to our clients and obviously our listeners and anybody else because. It's huge, man, and it's a huge problem. So, yeah, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, guys. This was uh, definitely fun and a, uh, a great time to be on here and just talk about, obviously, Truck Park. So really do appreciate it, and I hope to uh, to be on here again in the near future. Yeah, and yeah, I'd love to do a catch-up uh, down the road and just kind of see the progression where you take the company. So uh, there's no doubt there's a need. I love the model. It's structured great. The value is tremendous. So we're definitely going to promote you as an affiliate partner. So we'll connect. I want to get a logo from you and just kind of redirect for a website within our internal um, database, if you will, and we'll connect there. We also have a Facebook group, so get a load of this trucking um, Facebook group that people will get into so we'll make sure to post some stuff in there and and share all your contact info and and everything there so man we appreciate your time so much uh, I was super excited it's funny he is on LinkedIn because that's how we connected <laughs> was was connecting through LinkedIn and um, you know we started chatting and uh, the second I, I started looking into the company I'm like oh I don't know how I haven't heard about this or why it took me this long to figure out about you guys but I'm, I'm super excited that i did because there's a tremendous need i mean you had mentioned you know 
a whole city shuts down access for truck parking, that's a huge blow to the trucking industry, right? That's a, um, you know, it's a negative blow to the, to the trucking companies because now it, it, it displaces them, it puts them out, it makes it um, an inconvenience. It's now a headache for them going into a territory where they're probably used to going a certain route, parking in a certain spot, and then now it's like, oh, shit, what do we do? Well, here's the answer. You know, you talk to my guy Anthony, he has it all laid out for him. I'm sure you're going to get more spots around the city to find and uh, meet that demand, right, and get the supply there. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. they get on the app and do that. Um, it's funny. I feel like there's some partnership opportunities for you as well because, like, some of our past guests have had a couple different app models for fitness but healthy eating and it's like oh it'd be cool if you had integrated somehow i know they got google but like hey there's these spots to eat around our trucking spots right around our parking it's like hey here's some things to do around here um for push notifications which i don't know what you got roadmap but stuff like that i think would be badass oh, just to awesome. throw that out <laughs> you know um uh, as the idea person that i am so i think it's great i love it I yeah love man. It. cool anthony Thank you. I appreciate it so much, Ryan. Thank you for coming in and joining us from Vancouver. I appreciate yes, that. Um, listeners, as always, we're trying to bring just a tremendous amount of value to you, the trucking industry and trucking professionals. Um, follow up with them. Go check them out for drivers, truck drivers. You know, you guys can download it. And then anyone wanting to utilize the affiliate partnership there and monetize and get your spots full, reach out to him. I, it's a no-brainer to me. So... Anthony, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank buddy. you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Anthony.